Hello everyone, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. Hey, in this video, I wanna talk about macros. I wanna show you how to create a macro. I wanna show you some of the steps in a macro. And I wanna show you the difference in how macros function and operate between Audacity version 3.0.0 and earlier. I'm also going to give you a preview of Audacity version 3.0.2, which isn't released yet for production, but there's some changes with the macros in that version. And so I wanna take just a few minutes to show you the changes there because it looks like they're gonna stay that way when it does go into production. So buckle in, hold on, and let's talk about macros. As we start our conversation about macros, I wanna draw your attention to the screen that I have open. I have Audacity version 2.4.2 running in front of us here and I've got a project opened up that's ready to export to a wave. And now that it's ready to export, I wanna show you how to do that using a macro. So let me draw your attention to the tools drop-down menu. If we come up to the tools drop-down menu and we click on macros, you can see all the macros that I have built. I have one for YouTube, I have one for a mono podcast, I have one to export the WAV file in version 2.4.2, and I have another one to export a WAV file in version 3.0.0, and then I got a couple other ones down there that I've been just playing around with. But in this video, since we're running version 2.4.2, I wanna draw your attention to that one. So I'm gonna click once on there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open up this window a little bit wider so that we can see more of what's going on here as we talk about this macro. If you're not familiar with the concept of a macro, a macro is just a way to automate a repeated task. Something that you do over and over again can be automated in certain programs so that they will run automatically when you tell them to run, when you invoke the macro. Well, Audacity has a lot of macros that you can build, but you have to know how to build them. You have to know what you're doing to a certain point in order to put these steps in. When we look at this macro, we can see that there are nine steps in this macro to get it to do what I want it to do. The steps are followed sequentially from one through 10 in this instance. I can have a lot more steps in a macro than just nine of them, but in this particular macro, that's all I have. And so let me show you what this is doing. In this first step right here, we're selecting everything in the project. All the tracks are being selected. And then we're going to mix and render all of the tracks in the project to a new track. And then we're gonna move our focus to that last track. Now the beauty of this kind of a macro is that it doesn't matter how many tracks you have in your project. When a macro is counting a track, it always starts at zero. The top track in your project is track zero. The next track down is track one, and then two, three, and so on and so on. Well, a lot of the times we may not know how many tracks we're going to have in our final project. And so the beauty of this macro is that I can simply tell it to move the focus to the last track. It doesn't matter if I have three tracks or 30 tracks. It's always going to move the focus to the last track. And then once it moves the focus to the last track and highlights that track, we're going to unselect everything in the project. And then in step five, we're going to toggle the focus track. In other words, we're going to give it focus again. And then step six says, select cursor to track end. This is where we're going to select that final track that we just mixed and rendered. So here's what we've done so far. We've selected all the tracks. We've mixed and rendered those tracks to a new track. We've moved our focus to that new track. We've unselected everything, and then we've reselected the last track. Why did we reselect the last track? Well, in this particular macro, I'm gonna put a limiter on it. And when I put a limiter on it, I'm putting a hard limit on it at a minus two dB threshold. And then once I put a limiter on it, I'm going to solo that last track, that focus track. And once it's soloed, I'm going to export it as a WAV file. Remember that when you're exporting a track out of Audacity, if you've got all the other tracks muted and the track that you want to export soloed, it's only going to export that soloed track. And so that's my logic behind doing this. So let's run this and see what it'll do for us, shall we? I'm gonna click cancel just to uh, close this window, if I can find my mouse, there it is. I'm gonna hit cancel right there, and I've got the project just sitting there. Let's invoke that particular macro and see what we can do. So let's come down here to apply macros and let's export wave for version 2.4.2. And I'll tell you why I have two different versions of this when we get to 3.0.0. But for now, I just need to run this uh, wave export for version 2.4.2, and so, as I do this, you'll see the steps go. It's gonna be rather quick. As it goes through them, I'll try and narrate a little bit about what's happening, and then I'll show you where the WAV file ends up. So I'm gonna click OK to do this. And it highlighted all my tracks. It's mixing and rendering to a new track. 
Once it mixes and renders, it's going to apply my hard limiter at a minus 2 dB because you can see I've got some uh, audio that's peaking out there and getting kind of high, and now it's exporting it as a wave. And just that fast, I'm done. I've taken my project, I've mixed it down to a final track, and then I've exported that track to a WAV file. Well, how do you know where the WAV file is? In version 2.4.2, the WAV file is always placed in the same directory. When I exported the WAV file, it created this directory right here called macro output. That directory wasn't there a minute ago. Audacity creates that folder automatically and then puts my exported WAV file in that folder. So there's the WAV file that I just now exported. And so just that fast, I was able to export the WAV file. I didn't have to do anything but click once. I'm even going to show you how to automate that here in just a moment. But now let's look at this same, this same project in version 3.0.0 and see what the differences are. Now on this screen, I've got the same project opened up, the same name, episode 93, but now I'm in version 3.0.0 of Audacity. And I want to show you the difference here. If we go back up to our Tools drop-down menu, and we look at the macros, only this time instead of 2.4.2, let's select the 3.0.0, where we export a WAV file for version 3.0.0, and I'll show you some differences. I'm going to open this up again so that we can see it a little bit better. And the differences are basically, I was able to add comments. In version 3.0.0, you can add comments to your macros. You can't do that in earlier versions. If I took this particular macro that I built for 3.0.0 and I tried to run it in 2.4.2 or earlier, it would fail. It would come up with an error and say, hey, there's a, a line in here called a comment that I don't understand what to do with. And so it, it basically stops at that point. But in version 3.0.0 and later versions, we have the ability to add comments to our macros, which is a really nice feature. And so in this particular one, the first line that I have, instead of being select all, I've got a comment. And I've, I've reminded myself what this macro does in that first comment. It mixes down unlimited tracks, unlimited number of tracks, to a new track, and then exports that new track as a WAV file. Then I go into the same commands that I did in 2.4.2. I select all, and then I mix and render to a new track. But then in step four, I added a brand new comment again, and I said the steps below select the new mixed track. So the track that I just created in my mix and render, the next thing I'm going to do is select that track. So again, I move focus to that last track, I unselect everything, and then I toggle the focus track in order to highlight it again, and then I select it again in step number eight. I'm gonna open this up a little bit wider so we can see all the way to the bottom here. And then the next thing that I'm going to do, I've got a comment in step nine. It says, apply a hard limiter at a minus 2.0 dB peak. The parameters on the limiter are there and I'm at a minus 2 dB. And then in step 11, I've got another comment where I actually mix down the track to a solo track and I export it to wave. So I'm soloing the track and then I export it as a wave. So I'm going to cancel out of here now that we've kind of got a little bit of a rundown on the, what that macro is. And I can come back up again to my tools drop down window and I can apply that macro or let me show you something else that's pretty cool with this. If I come up to my Audacity drop down window and I go into preferences, in preferences I can go to keyboard option and then I can search on WAVE, W-A-V. And when I search on WAVE, here's my export. Here's my command to export a WAVE file. I can add a keyboard shortcut to simplify this even more. So I don't have to drop down that window and click on apply macro and then select the macro from the list of macros. I can apply a keyboard shortcut right here to do it just by hitting that keyboard shortcut. And so what I'm going to do here is come down into this window next to the set button and I'm going to just press W. And when I press W and I hit set, it's going to set W, you can see it right there. W is the shortcut now to export a wave using that export wave 3.0.0 text file that I have created. So I'm gonna tell this okay. And then if I come back up to the tools menu just to show you this and I hover over apply macro, you can see now export wave 3.0.0 has a shortcut of just simply W. So let me back out of here. And now I'm just going to press W and we're going to watch it export and do its thing again. 
selected all the tracks, mixing and rendering to a new track. It's putting that limiter on it against the same macro as 2.4.2. It just has comments in it. And now it's going to export that file, that mixed down track, to a WAV file. And once the WAV file's done, we can go get it. And the WAV file in version 3.0.0 is built the same as it was in version 2.4.2. So here's my 3.0.0 folder. And within that, here's the project we were just working on. And it created that same directory, macro output. And there's my WAV file that I just exported out of 3.0.0. It's a little bit different in 3.0.2, which isn't released yet. I can't emphasize that enough. I just have it so I can play around with it and see what it's doing. It's not in production yet. If you go get 3.0.2, don't use it for production. Use it to debug. Use it to see what it'll do. Use it to see what the changes are, but don't use it for production. So let me get Audacity version 3.0.2 up and running, and we'll look at the same process in it. So now I've got that same project opened up in version 3.0.2 of Audacity. Let's go up here to the Audacity drop down window and look at about Audacity to just verify that that's the version that I'm using. I've got three versions of Audacity running on my computer and I want to make sure I don't get anything confused or mixed up. So yes, I am in 3.0.2, which again is not in production. Don't use it for production. If you go get it, don't use it for production just yet. Use 3.0.0 or earlier but not 3.0.2. Now, just for reference, if I come back up to my tools drop-down window and I look at my macros, they're all right there. Again, I can apply this macro by using the keyboard shortcut W, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm gonna hit W and we're gonna watch it do its thing again. So it, it selects all the tracks, it's mixing and rendering to a new track, and then it's applying a limiter to that new track. And then once that limiter is applied to the new track, it's exporting that track as a wave, just like we've seen it do before. But the difference now is this. If I come back over to my finder window to that folder that we were using, 3.0.2, there's the project I was using. But unlike 3.0.0 and unlike 2.4.2, there is no macro output folder associated with 3.0.2. And so you think, well, what happened to it? Where is it? Well, remember the directory preferences were introduced in 3.0.0. There's been a new addition to that in 3.0.2, and it looks like it's going to stay there. Let me show you what I mean. If we come back to the Audacity screen, and I go back up to the Audacity drop-down window and back into preferences, and this time I go to directories where I set my directories preference, you'll see that there's a new field here. It's called macro output. Now, beginning in version 3.0.2, and it looks like this is going to stay this way, you have to select a folder for your macro output to go to. And so I've got a folder selected there on my desktop that I'm putting all of my macro outputs in that folder. So this has to be set up now this way in version 3.0.2, and I'm assuming it's going to stay that way. Like I said, it looks like it, it's going to. But this is where you tell it where to go, in a nice sort of way, of course. So I'm going to cancel out of there and let's go back here to my finder window. And this folder right here called macro outputs is the folder that I had selected in my directory preferences. Now, if I go to macro outputs, there's my macro output folder and there's the WAV file that I just exported. To me, that's clumsy. That's harder. I hope that they change that back. But the conversations that I'm seeing on the forum don't seem to be headed that way. So this might be something permanent here that we have to make a change on if you're exporting macros. And again, starting with version 3.0.0, you can import and export macros. In fact, this macro that we've been playing with, I'll have a link in the description below to two files, to two macros. It's the same macro. I'll have one for version 2.4.2 and earlier, and I'll have one for version 3.0.0 and later. And the only difference, again, between those two macros is in the later macro, I was able to add comments. But let me show you one more thing before I let you go, all right? If we come back here to version 3.0.2, and it's the same in version 3.0.0, and we open up our macro window, and let's say, for example, we wanna create a brand new macro. We click new, and we enter a name. I'm just gonna say new for this one. And it saves it off as new. And as soon as it saves it off as new, there's nothing in it. So I can begin to insert things in this if I want to. You always want to highlight that end 
command because it's going to put everything that you insert in above whatever you've got highlighted. So if I insert this, if you've never been in macros, this is going to be overwhelming. But you can see that you can use so many of the effects and other things within Audacity to build a macro. You can do a lot of stuff with a macro. And it's worth spending time and getting in here to be able to uh, learn how to do some of this stuff. You can even, let me scroll back here to the left, you can even run a macro within a macro. For instance, here's my minus 14 lefts YouTube macro. I can make that into a command line where this new macro that I'm building can call another macro. And when it calls that macro, the steps in that macro then are followed and then it returns back to the macro that I'm working on. So I can even call out different macros within a macro, which is really a powerful tool. But I'm just going to kind of scroll around here and let's see if we can uh, pick something that uh, doesn't really matter what it is, I guess. Let's do save copy. Let's insert save copy here. And so let's say that we've got this macro done. We're going to insert a save copy. And when we insert it, we're going to name it something. Whenever you put a command line within a macro, if there's parameters on it, you simply double click it and it will open up the dialog box for you. I'm going to leave this one just the same. And now you'll notice that there's no big blue OK button. In version 2.4.2 .2 and earlier, there was a big blue OK button right here, but it's gone. So the first time I started to use this, I thought, well, how do I save this? Well, the way that you save it is you simply close it out. And when you close it out, it prompts you, hey, do you want to save? And so I'm going to cancel right now. But if I was going to save it, I'd say yes. And I, you know, it would save off the work that I've done. But that's a little bit confusing. Again, it looks like it's going to stay that way. It's that way on version 3.0.0, and it's that way on this version 3.0.2. And from what I can tell, that's not going to change anytime soon. So they've taken away the OK button. You just have to know when you click close, it's going to prompt you. Or if you click the X, if you're on a Mac like I am, it's going to prompt you either way to save that. But first, I want to insert another parameter in here for us just real quick. And this time I want to look for the limiter and I want to show you how I did that with the limiter. So we get over here to the L's. There's our limiter. I'm going to tell it OK. Once we put the limiter in, it remembers the last settings that I used. But again, to change it, all you have to do is double click in that field and it brings up the limiter dialog box. Again, any parameter or any effect that you put in here in a macro, if it has variables in it, when you click on the line, it will open up the dialog box. And of course, here's where I can change the dialog for the particular command that I'm using in that macro. I'm just going to cancel out of here for now. And again, I'm going to tell it to close. And when I do, it's going to say you've got unsaved changes. Yeah, let's go ahead and save it just for the heck of it. But that's a brief introduction to macros for you. Macros are very powerful tools. And I really encourage you to get in and play around with those because they save a lot of time. I'm sure I'll be doing future videos on other macros as I develop more. But for now, I'm going to let you go. And again, don't forget the link below has links to those two macros. And I do teach an on-demand video course called Audacity Bootcamp Beginner to Advanced. If you're interested in that, there'll be links to that below as well. It's six and a half hours of video instruction, and I keep it updated and I keep it refreshed. So if you're interested, go take a look at that as well. And I hope to see you there. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.